Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Jailbird by Kurt Vonnegut. So as always, I'm going to read the blurb, go through and look at my tabs, and then I'm going to share my overall thoughts and a rating at the end. So, money talks, money laughs, money cries. Walter F. Starbuck went to Harvard because he was befriended by a millionaire. He went to prison because Richard Nixon's henchman used his office to hide a trunk full of non-too-legal dollars. He went into the down-home records division of the Ramjack Corporation because... because he met a shopping bag lady on the street. Because he used to be a communist. Maybe just because Jailbird is a magical experience, angry, funny and sad, in which the things we do on our strange planet sparkle in a whole new light. So as always with Vonnegut, I thought that the actual writing and some of the ideas and the dialogue were kind of more gripping than the story itself, although I will admit, I mean, I'm not American, so I don't know a huge amount about Watergate, which is kind of what this is all about, really. So he talks about a protest and he says, and the people came as promised, they came on foot. In order to discourage them, the city fathers had cancelled all streetcar service in that part of the city that day. Which seems pretty typical to me. And we have a few references to Sacco and Vanzetti, which I'm not familiar with the case. I believe they were both put to death for a crime they possibly didn't commit. I know uh, Ginsburg talked about them in Howl. I thought this was quite beautifully written. Somebody um, says she, she must have tried seven or eight languages on him, slipping from one to another as easily as a musician changing tempos and keys. Not only that, but she altered her gestures too, so that her hands were always doing appropriate dances to each language. I thought this was funny, this character says this, and this is kind of how I think. How can you speak of love to a woman, she asked me early in our courtship, who feels that it would be just as well if nobody had babies anymore, if the human race did not go on. There are some references to Edith Piaf, the French singer, who is one of the best vocalists who ever lived, really. We have uh, the phrase, uh, it says, half the, half the inmates, it seemed, were writing memoirs or spy novels or romans à clef, or what have you. So there was a lot of talk about book reviewing, and especially in the New York Times. And that means like books of key. So I, I don't know exactly what that means. We have another reference to Edith Piaf singing Non Je Ne Regret Rien. And he says, this means of course, no, I'm not sorry about anything. Well, it means no, I don't regret anything, but you know. Thought this was interesting uh, observation. There was a tendency on the part of the army to coddle veterinarians since they were so hard to recruit. They could make fortunes on the outside, especially in cities looking after people's pets. This was why they gave Fender such a pleasant private apartment on the end of a dock. Oh yeah, my book is falling apart a little bit as well. We have a reference to the Radium Girls as well. Obviously not the book, but with the concept. Uh, it went like this. In the 1920s, the United States Navy awarded Wyatt Clock a contract to produce several thousand standardised ship's clocks that could be easily read in the dark. The dials were to be black. The hands and the numerals were to be hand-painted with white paint containing the radioactive element radium. About half a hundred Brockton women... Oh. No, just typo. About half a hundred Brockton women, most of them relatives of regular Wyatt Clock Company employees, were hired to paint the hands and numerals. It was a way to make pin money. Several of the women who had young children to look after were allowed to do the work at home. Now all those women had died or were about to die most horribly with their bones crumbling, with their heads rotting off. The cause was radium poisoning. Every one of them had been told by a foreman, it had since come out in court, that she should keep a fine point on her brush by moistening it and shaping it with her lips from time to time. Well, this was just... I don't, I don't even know. I'm just going to read it out. To give, an extra to, the, to give an extra dimension to the scolding she gave me, the word twerp was freshly coined in those days and had a specific definition. It was a person, if I may be forgiven, who bit the bubbles of his own farts in a bathtub. You unbelievable jerk, she said. A jerk was a person who masturbated too much. She knew that. She knew all those things. They talk about fist-fucking films, as you do. He used the phrase, what a time to be alive, which I thought was funny because that's almost a meme now, you know? And I mean, when was this published? And he used it sarcastically too. 1979. So he said a, a drug mother basically let a baby get mauled to death. What a time to be alive. There was a joke here I liked as well. What's the difference between an enzyme and a hormone? She might ask me. I don't know, I would say. You can't hear an enzyme, she would say. So all in all, I thought it was a pretty interesting little book. Again, it was a lot of the dialogue and the ideas that interested me the most. But um, yeah, still an interesting little read. And it reminds me a lot of some of the ways in which I write in terms of kind of followed a single person, uh, like a biography of the events of a single person, if that made sense. Overall, I gave it like a 3.75 out of 5. Did enjoy it and we'll be reading more Kirk Vonnegut soon. So there we have it, that's what I made of Jailbird by Kurt Vonnegut. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.